What's up? So, yeah, I'm, I'm a diehard Aussie, uh, born and bred here. Um, but, you know, I thought I'd give language learning a go at school, and I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to learn Indonesian. Uh, funnily enough, I've met Colin before, he's a great guy, um, and he really knows his languages. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a young gun here, actually, I'm only in my second year, but I'm assured entry medicine, so I'm studying medical sciences with the second major in Indonesian. Uh, so, you really can combine these language studies with a lot of different things, um, as you're probably going to see. Um, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to travel to Indonesia and do uh, some intensive language courses, and it was an amazing experience. I'll say a bit more about that later too. And um, yeah, that's about it. I grew up in the country and had to travel a long way to go to school, so really enjoying the opportunities that are available to me here at UWA. Thank you, Ross. Sit Lam. <laughs> Ross, you are a medical student who has also continued with your language studies. Why did you decide to continue with Indonesian at high school and beyond? Yeah, so it's a good question, and um, I think Holden hit the nail on the head about a couple of things there. Um, first of all, the opportunity. Um, I just jumped on every opportunity that's presented itself before me. Um, I love challenges, that's another reason why I took it. And since Indonesian was the only language that was taught at my school, and I wanted to learn a language, I just went for it. Um, better yet, at my school they offered an accelerated program. So you could do your year 11 in year 10 and your year 12 in year 11, so a year earlier. And I really liked that. It meant that I could focus really hard on studying Indonesian when I had a uh, reduced study load in my other year 12 subjects. And it meant that I could do a lot better in it, I think, um, retrospectively. Um, I forgot to mention before, I'm, I'm just about to finish Spanish level one. Uh, and I picked up a little bit of Javanese because one of the cleaners at the place where I uh, studied in Indonesia loved to teach me some in the mornings. Um, great guy. Uh, so... Do you know the J word? Um, let's just not say that. <laughs> um, yeah. Did get much beyond actually saying good morning and good evening, but... Um, yeah, very earthy language. So, in terms of studying at university, uh, so I had a year's break in year 12 from Indonesian because I was just doing my other subjects. Uh, they let you come in at that high level, so I began at level three and four Indonesian at university, so I could continue sort of where I left off. And uh, as a study technique, I can recommend to all of you, uh, in particular if you're not gonna be actively studying, keep a diary. As soon as you can uh, talk about your daily routines, the simplest of things, you know, you might think it's gonna be a bit repetitive, but it's a really good way to turn over all of that vocabulary. Um, so furthermore, um, like, like was said before by um, one of our professors, um, most people are bilingual and now living at college, uh, on College Road, St Catharines, um, most of the people that I live with are bilingual, trilingual, can speak more languages and it just opens so many doors. Um, you know, when you can talk to someone in their own language, all of a sudden you're speaking to their heart. Um, the same goes, you know, you can talk to them in a language they understand, it goes to their head, but you speak to them in their own language, it goes to their heart. And I've, I've found that to be very true in all my experiences. Uh, beyond that, I've always wanted to travel but not have many opportunities. Uh, whenever my family uh, had a vacation, it'd be camping in the bush. <laughs> um, anyone here from Jinji? No, I didn't think so. Um, so, yeah, it really gave me... What was that? Was that someone? Someone. Yeah, I, I understand if you don't want to claim being <laughs> um, Yeah, not much, not much to it. So, yeah, it was it was an opportunity to travel also that um, was open for me because otherwise I really wouldn't have had, I guess, a, an incentive to do so because I felt like I needed to focus on my studies and, and always be working. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Thank you. Ross, um, tell us about your experience of combining languages with your medical studies at UWA. How do you think you'll be able to use your language skills in your work as a doctor? Right, so uh, combining the studies actually is pretty straightforward. Um, as has sort of been explained already, uh, you can take two majors. Um, actually, I have a pretty hectic mate that's doing three um, by adding on overloading units and doing some units. Uh, so you just choose them at the start. And um, with my 
Uh, degree specific major being in medical sciences. My second major is in Indonesian uh, because I'm only undergrad at the moment. Um, Postgraduate medicine, that's a whole other story. Uh, so it's, um, it's pretty straightforward. You just choose your units and you have your equivalency and, and you just get going and you turn up to classes. Um, in terms of my future aspirations, so uh, as someone who's, who's become aware of um, the global situation and, and had a chance to travel and, and see the difference in the health systems between some developed nations and, and developing nations, um, I think there's a great potential for people to take on some leadership, in particular privileged people like ourselves, um, in, in what really is the lucky country here, and make a difference somewhere else. So, you know, a lot of people um, you know, like the idea of doing some humanitarian work, uh, volunteering, you know, a build a school or, or just um, hand out aid, etc. But I thought, what can I do that is going to be more powerful than that? How can I uh, upskill so that when I go in to, to make a difference, it's really going to uh, stick? And so I thought, if I can learn the language of a nation that's developing, that has a, uh, a health system that's still very much developing, as is the case in Indonesia, and with such a, um, a disparate group of islands, really, it's, um, it's incredible. The archipelago has, uh, is it 17,000 or something? There's a lot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, the logistics of building a health system, um, it's, it's almost impossible. It's crazy. So uh, in the future, I'd like to work in Indonesia, in particular in the developing health system, in facing those... Um, those diseases and conditions that, that really have simple solutions, uh, things that you know you can vaccinate, that you can treat with antibiotics, um, that you can really uh, get a handle on. Um, as compared to some of the, the first world <laughs> problems, um, like obesity, etc. I, I won't go into a, a med rant, but um, a lot of them seem pretty intractable to me in particular. Um, thinking rationally. I'm not really sure how to, to deal with those things. Um, yeah, a bit scared about being a GP, to be honest. Uh, so that's, that's part of my vision, really. I'd like to go in and uh, make a difference. Thank you, Ross. Thanks very much for that. Just for the panel members, we, we are just running a little bit short of time, so we just might keep the answers brief. I know there's a lot that we want to say, um, but if we just can keep them succinct. Um, so, Ross, you participated in the in country study program with the Australian Consortium for In Country Indonesian Studies based here at UWA. Can you please explain what it is, the opportunities it provides to, uh, for students to learn Indonesian, and how the experience has had, the experience has benefited you? All right, so Ashitas is a non-profit organisation that's affiliated with universities around Australia. Uh, so it's, it's separate from them, but uh, linked. Uh, it's actually based here in UWA, that's where their main office is. But it doesn't matter which university you go to, you can do one of their programs. Uh, what they run are in-country studies in Indonesia. So it doesn't have to be Indonesian language, actually. That's only one of more than 30 different courses that they provide. You can do law, you can do business, you can do commerce, you can even do public health, which is something I'm planning to do in the future. Uh, what's better yet is that the government will pay you to go. So you can actually make money from doing an exchange. I kid you not. Um, there's $3,000 New Colombo Plan grants to go on short courses, and there's five to $7,000 New Colombo Plan grants to go for semester exchanges. And literally, you just need to be an Australian citizen and be enrolled in order to get one of those. It's that simple. Beyond that, there are New Colombo Plan scholarships that are quite prestigious, and there's a whole selection process for them, and they're, they're a big deal. Um, but the opportunity is definitely there. What I did was two back-to-back -back Indonesian language short courses in Salatika, which is in central Java. Uh, hence why I picked up a bit of Javanese. Um, and that was an awesome experience. Uh, in terms of what it has directly benefited me with. I got 12 credit points towards my degree, so I'm actually ahead on my units, and next year we'll have a reduced study load as a result. And it was just an amazing experience. Um, unforgettable in so many ways that I've, I kind of explained succinctly. Um, but at, at the core of it, I've now got a family in Indonesia, and that's literally what my, my homestay family, because I did a homestay, uh, said to me when they left, uh, Kamuara keluarga di Indonesia juga. 
you also have family in Indonesia now. Uh, so, you know, I'll never forget that. And um, I'll always be uh, willing and ready to travel to Indonesia and see them all again. And um, I made so many friends too. So, yeah, definitely worth it.